Hey guys, it's Heather from Naughty Wood Yarn. We are here with number two in our tutorial series on how to dye yarn with acid dyes. In this video, we are going to be covering what you need to make your solution and how to make your solution, your 1% stock solution, which we are going to be using in a lot of our tutorials to come on how to dye your yarn with acid dyes. So stay tuned and we will go ahead and teach you how to do that. Okay, so first let's go over the items that we need in order to make our dye stock. Now, everybody kind of differs from person to person what they use to make their dye stock. This is what I use to make my dye stock and what I kind of recommend. So you can adjust according to what it is that you feel comfortable with, but these are kind of the basics with a little bit of a tweak. So first we have our scale, which we measure our dye powder on, our acid dye powder. So that's pretty important. Then we have our respirator and you want to make sure anytime you open this that you have your respirator on. We have gloves because we want to make sure we protect our skin uh, from the acid dyes. And we have a paper towel over the surface so that uh, we can collect any of the powder that goes out and make sure that we're keeping that in a safe place. We have water, uh, of course, because remember our two items that we use to make a dye stock are water and, and dye powder. And then I like to use a spray bottle of water and I'll show you why shortly. I have a graduated um, beaker here so that I can measure out water. I actually use the beaker honestly to make my dye stock and then I pour it later into the cup, into the uh, storage jar. And then I have uh, my storage jar that I keep uh, my dye stock in and I have it labeled so that I know exactly what is in there, what color it is and what percent that dye stock is made up to. I definitely label the color because if any of you have ever seen dye, a lot of times dyes look one color and they really are another color. So you want to make sure to label it as soon as you've made it, if you, especially if you're going to have any leftover. So those are basically the item. Oh, I forgot my most favorite thing. This is um, one of those little milk frothers that you can get for like eight, nine dollars anywhere. So um, uh, I highly recommend this. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. I use it. And I have an apron here. Of course, you want to protect your clothing. That's up to you. I find it's a good idea. I've definitely decorated a lot of my clothes over the years of, of dyeing. So those are the items that we need. Now let's get into making the dye stock in the process. So one thing I wanted to mention that I didn't mention a moment ago is that um, you want your water to be either just to the point of boiling or um, extremely hot, let's put it that way. Uh, some people just use uh, their faucet water as hot as it can get. I boil my water, then I let it sit for a minute or two, and then I use it. So this has been boiled, it's quite hot, and I'm just gonna sit it off to the side until we need it. So what I generally do is I go ahead and I uh, use my spray bottle to mist down the surface. And the reason why I do this is because, believe it or not, when you open this up and you start measuring things out, uh, there are particles of dye that end up in the air and, or end up uh, coming out of there. And if you have a wet surface, it attracts them. So it is a little bit uh, easier to keep things kind of contained this way. The other thing I do is use uh, like a disposable pan to uh, make my stocks inside of that pan. Uh, I didn't, where that is, isn't a good place to, to record. So I just went ahead to use this surface. So it's up to you whether you want to have a designated spot that you make your dyes or if you're okay with just making them on a counter. This is not my kitchen counter. That's the other thing. Anything that we use, any of these items, once you use them for any type of uh, dyeing, any type of stock making, any of that, anything that has to do with acid dye, you never use it for food again. So this is all designated dyeing equipment here. And this is actually um, a countertop in our shop. So we don't um, eat on the surface either. So simply put, there you go. So, okay, anyway, we spray this down so that anything that comes out of it, anything that comes out of this, hopefully will be trapped on here. Uh, the other thing that I did 
uh, for a second there uh, uh, off camera is I went ahead and I took and I folded up a couple of paper towels over here so that I could have a place to put anything that has any type of dye on it without worrying about it going all over the place. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm actually going to be using this dye stock in a project that I have on hold right now until I make this. So um, I know how much I need, but um, this is uh, just going to be a portion of it. So I'm going to go ahead and make this um, specifically for that. But I am going to show you and describe it to you as we go. So the first thing is to get your scale ready. All right, and however your scale works, I keep mine in its case because I use part of this case for the process. I actually, we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. And if you put any type of item on top of the scale, and I do have to tell you, you can directly use the top of your scale. That's up to you. If it's just a designated four die only scale, you never wanna use one that you're gonna use for food later. But this one is used solely, solely for dyeing, for our measuring out our, our um, powders. However, cleanup is much easier if I do it this way. So I take the lid of the scale and I put it on there and I tear it out. So now I have a nice surface that I can put my powder into and then go put it um, in the sink to wash it off. So before I open my powder and go any further, I am going to have to put my respirator on. So I am going to get a little bit muffled, but hopefully you guys will be able to understand what I'm saying because I'm standing right next to the camera. Okay, guys, so we're going to do this as fast as we can so that I can take this respirator off. But you go ahead and you open it up and we are going to be making uh, to start with well actually to end with we are going to be filling this up so this uh, this container holds about I'm going to say it holds about 400 actually I'm only going to make 300 we're going to make 300 milliliters of dye stock of 1% dye stock so if you remember from the last video each 100 milliliters of water needs I'll pull this up for a second each 100 milliliters of water needs one gram of powder. So if we are going to be making 300 milliliters, we need three grams. So we're going to go ahead and measure out three grams on our scale. So I have my respirator back on. And there you go. That's what the uh, gray looks like, the gray powder. And my spoon is wet because I sprayed it. And you don't want to do that because you're going to end up with the powder sticking to it. You don't want to waste that powder. So we're going to go ahead and measure out three grams. Now that little bit of powder is already a gram. One and a half. We're halfway there. Okay. Oh, 2.8. 2.9 three okay so we have three grams of powder put the lid back on now since this is still here we're going to go ahead and just keep it keep um, our mask on and we turn him off and look that's why I use the lid you can use whatever surface you want to or how you work it out but it just works out best for me and if you notice I don't know if you guys can see, but there are sprinkles on the towel already. So the, I use a beaker. You can use directly whatever jar you're going to. You need some type of measuring item that has your um, your, mil, your milliliters on the side of it. So go ahead and put your powder in. And this doesn't have to be um, a beaker. I use a beaker because I got them on sale at Michael's for like $3. So it works out really well for me. Okay. So we set that aside. And because I use a beaker or whatever item that I, I has directly the measurement on the side, I can go ahead and pour in my 100 milliliters of water directly into here. And that's, that's what I do. Okay, so I'm going to take my hot water and I'm going to start off with just a little bit. 
I'm not going to quite go with 100 milliliters yet because you need to generally make a paste or make a slurry. I don't always do that. I find it works out usually pretty fine if I just uh, put in 100 milliliters and use a doohickey. And that's where this thing comes. It's, it's, it changes the game for me. So I'm going to put in 100 milliliters of water to start. That's just to start mixing. If you remember, we have three grams of dye in here. Put my little milk frother in there. Okay, now I am going to take a second and get rid of this guy so that I can take my respirator off. I'll be just a second. There we go. All the powder is gone basically, so we're safe to uncover. So I put in um, 100 just to mix, just to make sure that I get a good mixture here. I want to make sure that everything's incorporated in the water before I add any more water. Okay, that's pretty well mixed. Now, if you remember our math, we have three grams inside of 100 milliliters, so we have a 3% solution right now, but I need a 1% solution. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of my water. Because I use this little frother thing, I do generally have to wait for the frothy stuff to go down, so I'm gonna go ahead and let that go down, and then we'll add the water. Okay, so our bubbles are gone. If you wanna take a look there, you can see the bubbles are all gone. So now, well now we have two choices. We can either use the rest of our water from our, tea, from our tea kettle here that's hot and fill it to the 300 milliliters that we need, or I can take cold water and put it in there and cool off the solution and get it basically down to room temperature and, um, and then the cooling process is done. So I usually use cold water. I usually go ahead and add cold water in it until where I need it to be, or room temperature water. So that is about 300 milliliters. And then I take my little stirry doohickey again. It really takes the work out of it. I have to say it's the best little purchase I ever made. And I had to buy another one for my kitchen because my um, my sons absolutely wanted to use this for frothing milk as well. It works really well. Okay, so there we go. All right, so a quick way to clean it off is to take the water that you have, put it in there, and now you have a clean stirry doohickey. Okay, he's all clean. Now, to store him, I have my 1% solution container and I go ahead and pour my dye in there. And because it is no longer hot, I can put my lid on right away. And there we go. 1% dye stock solution in mouse gray. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them down below. I'll be happy to answer them. Make sure you like and subscribe so you can get the next video in this series of tutorials on dyeing yarn with acid dyes. And I will see you in the next video.